I'm Adrian, the cruise and travel guy, and this week's cruise news update has a bit of a running theme, Virgin Voyages. The cruise line has announced a new range of cruises for Australia, cancellations to planned cruises, a delay to the launch of their fourth ship, $550 million in raised capital. Plus, I'll give you a quick recap of my visit to the Southern Hemisphere's largest cruise conference, including a Perfect Day the Leper update. Let's get into it. Virgin Voyages contacted its trade partners overnight, announcing a delay to the launch of its fourth ship, Brilliant Lady. She was scheduled to launch this December, with her maiden cruise season taking place in the Caribbean. But, citing unexpected construction and supply chain issues, as well as staffing problems, the cruise line has cancelled all scheduled cruises. Currently, Virgin Voyages is not offering any cruises available to book on board Brilliant Lady. The change has also led to a series of cancellations for Resilient Lady and Valiant Lady in 2024. Valiant will no longer sail her planned Caribbean itineraries between January 7th and March 23rd, 2024 inclusive. Likewise, Resilient Lady's cruises from Athens, scheduled for between August 4th and October 13th, 2024 inclusive, have all been cancelled. Guests affected by the cancellations have been offered alternative cruise options. The cancellation of part of Resilient Lady's 2024 cruise season coincides with the line's announcement that it is doubling down on its Australia deployment. Virgin Voyages confirmed at Clear's Cruise 360 event in Brisbane yesterday that Resilient Lady will return to Australia for the 24-25 summer cruise season. This time, the line promises more Australian destinations and more departure points for our market. New itineraries will include calls in far north Queensland, Eden in New South Wales, Kangaroo Island and even Broome in Western Australia. Departures from Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne, as well as a potential departure from Fremantle, appear as the foundation for the new season. As at the time of recording, the new itineraries haven't been released, but they do go on sale to the public on September 11th, so stay tuned for more information. The cruise line also took the opportunity to announce it had raised $550 million in capital in order to accelerate its growth in international markets such as Australia. The company said that the new funding will help their rapid expansion, plus it will help them to focus on creating outstanding and innovative customer experiences. Resilient Ladies' Made in Australian season is just months away, with the ship greeting the shores of Darwin on November 27th, before making her way into Sydney Harbour on December 4th. It's also not too late to jump on board her maiden cruise from Australia with me and my group. I've popped a link in the description below for more information. This week, I attended Clear's Cruise 360 conference in Brisbane. The Southern Hemisphere's largest cruise conference was a melting pot of cruise line executives, trade partners, and media. While discussion panels focused on topics like sustainability and the importance of expanding cruise destinations, we also learned some interesting cruise statistics from the work of the people at Cruise Critic. Some of the highlights in the data presented by Cruise Critic editor Adam Coulter and Australian sales manager Vanessa Green are that Australian cruisers are now looking to upgrade their onboard experiences with higher grades of cabin or even with more premium and luxury cruise lines. Plus, there has been a notable uptick in people searching for smaller and more intimate cruise ship experiences, which, as you know, is something I regularly stand on my soapbox and talk about. And interestingly, 65% of you are willing to pay more upfront for higher inclusions on board, which is something that I personally value as well. When I posted on Facebook that I was attending the conference, I received a number of questions from you guys and I did my best to have them answered. Chief among them were queries about ship choices and deployments for the Australian cruise market. While nothing is ever confirmed until you see an official release from a cruise line, you should know that the Royal Caribbean local office has heard your calls for more ship choice, and they know that you love the Voyager and Radiance class ships as well. Long term, Royal Caribbean would love to see a ship based in Australia year round, and as many as four or five plying our waters during the summer. The pandemic really hit pause on any of these developments, but now that cruising has returned, 
we may just see some of these goals realized within the next three to five years. I was also able to learn that stage one of Perfect Day La Lepa, the company's first private island experience in the South Pacific, has a tentative launch date in 2026. Of course, that is subject to change. Well, that's it for this week's cruise news update. Wherever you are, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. And a thumbs up will tell YouTube that other people might enjoy this video as well. If you are looking to book a cruise, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguy.com.au. And if you haven't done so, you can give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram at Cruise and Travel Guy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Guests affected by the cancellations have been offered alternative cruise options. The... The cancellation of part of Brazilian the cancellation of part of Brazilian ladies 2024 season doubles what the cancellation of part of Brazilian ladies 2024 season this time the line promises more Australian departures nope as well as their focus on creating outstanding and you what innovative. We also learned through a fantastic panel discussion uh, from Cruise Critic, what? The company's first um, private island experience. That, that's not good.